Good morning. Whoops. And happy Friday, exactly. It is happy Friday. It is Friday, Friday, Friday. And it's Alcohol Inc. Friday. Sorry, was that a lot? Oh, everyone's right. waiting. Everyone's waiting. No, just one person. Who's my lucky one person who's tuning in to watch? No. no one. Two people. There we go. That's a start. We're off and running. Good morning. Oh, it's Karen Campbell. Good morning, my love. How are you? Good, 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 I hope. Okay. Let me get myself a little bit organised here. Hey, Annalise, how are you? Happy Friday indeed. It is. It has been a big week, to say the least. It's been kind of massive. Um, how are we all today? How's everybody's week? Oh, Stephen McKenzie, good morning. Thank you for a sensational boxing session this morning. I am still sweating and my hands are still shaking. But that's okay. We're going to make this work. Stephen McKenzie is my personal trainer of 13, 14 years. And uh, if anybody is in Adelaide and would need a personal trainer, let me know. He's your man. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing this morning is talking about the alcohol inks, which is today's special. And talking about some of the... <laughs> um, Talking about the three different alcohol inks, four different alcohol inks that are on order, or sorry, that are available to you and how to use them on your projects. Um, I do have two other live Facebooks planned for today and they will be at about three o'clock and then again at about 4.30. So, um... So what I would like to do is talk to you a little bit about how easy alcohol inks are to use and how they, how you can incorporate them into your, your cards and your projects and the different surfaces that you can use them on. So, uh, okay, so first thing I'm going to do, these are some of the uh, alcohol ink backgrounds that I have done on previous live Facebooks. Um, I I've, I've, have kept these because they are so nice and so pretty and really, really eye-catching. And I'm gonna sneeze. No, I'm not. It's gone. So for today only, uh, alcohol inks are 15% off. So that means, and they'll be automatically calculated at the checkout. Um, and we have got plenty in stock of every single color. And you need all of the colors. So, <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is, the other thing actually that I've got on special, is this brand new little guy here. Fancy, fancy new case from Couture Creations. So these are normally $40. They're going to sell for um, normally, but I've got them out for $35 today only. And I think that there's about three left on the shelf. So go, go for it. So what do you do? It holds about 60 alcohol inks, which um, I think I finished, I filled mine up quite easily. It has a lovely little pocket at the top and it has plenty of room, but I also love that I can take this out. Shit, I'm not gonna swear, sorry. I can remove this bit, but I'm not gonna do it now. And I can put that on my desk and I can use this as a, a carry case if I need to. It's actually super sturdy. It is really, really good. So that is what I am storing all of my alcohol inks in as well. The um, other option that you've got for alcohol ink storage is the Ranger alcohol ink tin. And that holds 30 bottles of ink. And I have no idea how much they are off the top of my head. But that is a great little tin that opens up and the bottles fit perfectly in there as well. So 
So they're available online. Now, what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to have a play with some of the colours that I've got here. I have created little swatches for my alcohol inks just on some Yupo. I've written on the back of my alcohol ink on my Yupo what colour it is and if it's a glitter or a um, metallic or a, or, or a plain. Um, and I keep that in there as well. So I'm just going to pop this off to the side off camera. So alcohol inks are exactly that. They are alcohol inks. They are comprised of alcohol and ink. Ha, huh. thank you, Louise. That's, that's fantastic. Um, they are, when you use alcohol inks on a normal substrate, such as um, just normal cardstock or paper or watercolour paper, it's going to soak right in. So you need to use a specific paper for this purpose. Now, this is about the only time you will ever see me use gloves. And that is because I had my nails done yesterday. But it can be a little bit messy when you pick, up, pick them up and move them around. Um, so the paper that I'm going to be having a play with, I have some transparent Yupo, which is, as you can see through it, it's not totally clear, but transparent. Um, I've got some black as well to have a play with and the white Yupo. So I'm going to show you a few different fun techniques using those and, and how to use them. When you are first starting out with alcohol inks, a couple of things that you need to have handy. You need a surface to work on. Hello, Vicky. You haven't missed anything, darling. You just watched me arguing putting on a pair of gloves, all right? So you're not that late. Um, a couple of things that you do need. I have some paper towel handy. And, and I have... You need some blending fluid. Blending fluid is what really does make the magic happen. Um, the alcohol ink tin that I was showing earlier, they are $15.50. So they're quite a good price. So half the price of the, uh, the big Couture Creations one that I'm using here. So the blending solution. So this is... I use this to lay down a surface of colour. The other thing that I have handy is a heat tool. There's a few different things that you can do to create patterns. Um, there's a fancy puffing tool. I don't have those in stock at the moment. They're currently out of stock with my supplier. I have used them before in my life. Um, I don't love them. I'll just leave it at that. I've also got a straw. A straw is going to work just as well. So I'm going to pull a few different colours out here to have a play with. I've got the uh, the glitters. Um, with the alcohol inks, it, the mixed ones such as the metallics and the glitters, you do need to give them a good shake prior to using them because all the good stuff is sitting right there in the bottom. So Shake those tuck shop lady arms. Or just mine anyway. And get that all going. Um, Rightio. So I'm going to start just on the plain, plain Yupo. And as you can see, I'm recycling my Yupo. I was playing with some colours yesterday. So I'm going to put down a drop, a good, a good generous squeeze of blending solution. Uh, and then I'm going to start laying down some colour. So when I lay down some colour, I'm going to stick with colours that are in the same colour family to start with because I don't want to make too much of a, a muddy mess. So I'm just going to go in like that. Now, I can just let that dry as is. I can grab my straw and blow it around. which is looking pretty great.
which I was explaining to a customer, lovely Anne, yesterday about the puffer tool. I don't, I don't need a puffer tool. I don't need the handheld tool. For me, I don't find a purpose for that. Um, so this is just using the fluoro pink and the geranium. I'm going to pop some glitter fuchsia over the top now. And that's so pretty. And that has just added a, a really shimmery, glittery finish to that one. And then I can put that aside to dry. I can keep building on it. I can add some more depth of colour, which, you know, I could have just left that alone. But let's be honest, I wasn't going to. Um, and I'll add some wine, as in the colour, not to the wine. So I can also drop in a little bit more blending solution to help it move around. But it's only going to work on Yupo paper because everything else will soak in. Okay, so that is what the Yupo paper does. It allows the liquid to stay on top. The alcohol evaporates, leaving the colour sitting on top of the paper. So I'm just going to pop that one aside to dry. So I'll do another one on white, but this time I'll add some metallic. So a generous, a generous application of the blending solution. And I'm going to start this time with that colour, which is daffodil. And you need to move quickly because that liquid's going to evaporate. If I was to walk away, go and make myself a coffee, pour a glass of wine at 11.45 in the morning, which is perhaps a little early, um, then of course it's going to dry and I'm not going to be able to reactivate it again. So having the lids off ready to go is a smart thing to do. So two colours here, I added honey and daffodil. And now I'm just going to drip through a little uh, champagne. And I can move that around with my straw. Or if I grab the heat gun, the heat will dry it and puff it, fluff it, fluff it around a, bit, a little bit as well. Puff it. Puff it. Puff it. it. <laughs> move it. Let's go with move it around a little. And I haven't been drinking, ladies and gentlemen. It does sound like it this morning, but yeah, you know, that's okay. So just creating simple backgrounds like this is a really, really easy way to make card fronts, um, create projects. I like these lines that you get in here. I'm surprised I've got any breath left after boxing this morning, actually. Um, if I quickly add another colour in, I'm going to pop some copper on there, giving it a good shake first. There we go. Oh, nice. Uh, there we go. And I'm starting to create a really lovely little pattern. So I'm going to pop that aside to dry as well. On transparent paper, it gives a slightly different finish. So transparent paper, like I said before, is exactly that. It's transparent. So if I go in this time with... Let's make a pile of lids down there. I might go with blues and greens this time. Um, so I've got my, I've got a, a, let's go all in. We'll go with the metallic green, the glitter blue, and I will start with eggplant. So before I do anything, these two, I need to give them a good shake. And again, I'm going to put down a, nice surface of the blending solution and i'm going to start with my plain color rather than my glitter or 
metallic and I'm going to go so that's just the plain eggplant and this glitter is mind-blowingly lovely and why did I put the lid on okay and now if I add some green and I'm just dripping it in slowly on the edges And a little bit goes a really long way. You can use it quite sparingly if you want to, but I actually, I'm a little bit more generous with using it. I don't mind spreading it around a bit. And this one, I'm not going to blow with a straw or a heat gun. I'm just going to, or oh, actually, maybe I will. Lightly blow with my straw. And I'm going to pop a little bit more glitter back up in here. So the beautiful alloy metallic and the glitter together is such a gorgeous combination. I'm just going to turn that light down just a fraction. And what happens if you hit it with the heat gun? Let's find out. You don't want to overheat it with the heat gun because it is a synthetic paper it will actually melt your paper so you do need to keep your heat gun moving around all right otherwise it will go really bad really quickly and you can see the shimmer you can see the metallic and you can see the, where is it? The plain as well. So it's a nice little combo, that one. And when it dries, I'll, I'll bring it back up when it dries to show you. Um, because it will, uh, it just takes a little bit to dry. So the black is lovely as well. So the black, of course, this eggplant is not going to show up on the black. But what will happen is your glitters are going to look incredible and the alloys are going to look incredible as well so again i'm going to put down a a squirt and then i'm going to put on a squirt of that and i'm going to move it around now even though i've just used the just the peach one um i've got angelic here which is the white with glitter you have to give that one a good shake it's a bit thicker and i've got some cinnamon in a gold you can get some amazing effects on the black especially with the alloys like that looking pretty amazing Okay. Um, what else we got? Okay, let's play a little bit more with the uh, metallics. So if I don't put down the blending solution first, what happens? It doesn't have as much fluidity. It doesn't move around as much. So I just squirted on a little cinnamon or a lot of cinnamon, as the case may be. And you can see that it's not it's not moving around as much. It doesn't have that that same movement. If I was to use a add a little bit of that plain isopropyl alcohol from Bunnings, now we've got some movement. And it's got it's kind of like blending solution, but a lot more raw. So I personally prefer to add the blending solution. Make sure that you blow out of the right end of the straw, not the one that's been touching. <laughs> I got a mouthful of ink earlier. Hello, 
good morning to everyone. Sorry, I'm, I'm not concentrating on what the comments are saying this morning. Um, but... Good morning to everybody. All right. I'm going to pop this one aside to dry. That's looking great. Um, and then I'll come back and show you in a minute when they're dry. They, they do take a couple of minutes and I do like them to air dry a bit as well. And I think that that's really important that they air dry. So I'm going to use the ice blue and the jade metallic. Good morning, Joanne. And I'm going to put down some blending solution, which I've got a very small amount left in here. Oh, it's a bit spooky. And you get a really cool effect. So the black does work really well too. All right, just keep going, hey? Let's go, let's do some more. The white is kind of my favorite. I, I do love the white. Um, I also love putting down, uh, working with the plain colors, then adding highlights of those specialty ones. So um, a decent amount of blending fluid again. And my favorite combo, so this is the jade green. I'm gonna pop in a couple of spots of eggplant. And then I'm going to add some metallic jade around the edges to give it a little shimmer. And why not? Let's, oh no, let's not go too much. We'll go with the ice blue metallic. And I'm going to move that around. So what I particularly love about using a heat gun over the handheld blower or the straw is that it dries these lines in here, these beautiful puddles. And when they dry, they become lovely bits of artwork by themselves. If I had a, a felt blending tool, that would also work, but it's not my favorite finish. So I don't tend to do it very often. Um, I do think that this is probably my favorite way of doing it because it's a lot more artistic and it gives a really, really nice finish. Um, Louise, could you grab me above another bottle of blending solution, please? I have got none left in that one. A big one? Yeah, go hard or go home, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's looking good. And then I'll do a pink on the translucent. Thank you. And see what I mean about having a piece of paper towel down in the background? That's just because it, it, um, it tends to overflow and you do like it to run off the edge a bit. So I've got some fluoro pink and oh wow, that is fluoro pink. If I pop in some amber with it, what happens? Let's have a look. I perhaps was a little heavy handed on the blending fluid that time okay I did it again I picked up the wrong end of the straw <laughs> <laughs> all right <coughs> it's not very pleasant on camera sorry guys And adding in some drips while it's drying is adding some dimension, moving it around, and again, creating some really interesting lines. Now, I can't help myself. I've got to add some glitter to this one. So those little puddles that are still wet, 
I'm just going to drip some glitter peach into those puddles. And allow it to air dry. The fluoro pink's really nice, Vicky. Really nice. Okay. Right. I've got another bit of paper here, so I may as well just keep on playing. Let's do something in the colours that you probably wouldn't normally look at purchasing. So let's get rid of the my go-to colours that I use all the time because if I've got those in front of me, I tend to grab them more. Um, and I'm going to pull out something like yellows and browns. Nobody ever uses brown, but I've got fossil, mochaccino, smolder, midnight black, Let's go with those. So let's just get all of the other ones out of the way. Uh, and I also want to try the incandescent. Now, I haven't actually used this one yet, other than just swatching it. So, uh, and of course, before I start, I need to give them a good shake, especially the, the, the pearl. All right, so I'm going to start with my lightest colour, which is Fossil, which is pretty nice. And now I'm going to drop in some Mochaccino, which has got some lovely depth to it. Marigold. So what I'd like to do now is I'm going to hit it with the heat tool to move these colours around. And then while that's moving around, I'm going to drop in some of this incandescent. Let's do that. Helps to take the lid off first, apparently. So now the whole thing's got a beautiful glow to it. And if I wanted to add in some black, which is this one. So of course, black's gonna be like mind-blowingly powerful, yeah? Less is best. Wow. Okay, so that black, that black looks really nice. And the whole thing has got a, I don't know, I don't want to say, well, it's got an incandescent shimmer to it. That's the word I'm looking for. So that is really nice. So imagine this, if you went through your die cutting machine with a cog die, cutting cogs out of this to go on your scrapbook pages. Awesome. Love it. I'll just keep playing. All right, do one more. I'll do one more. Okay, what colour shall I do, people? Oh, Denise, hello. Uh, okay, should we do my least favourite colour? Everyone knows the colour that I dislike. I'm gonna, gonna go purple, because I don't love purple at all. Right, so I'm going to use the purple with the transparent paper. And the 
Right. Blending solution first and got a fair bit out of that. Squeeze the life out of it. Okay, so I've got some twilight and some amethyst, but I might do something a bit different. I'm going to put down some angelic glitter accent first. And because it's the glitter, I'm going to give it a good shake. So the white, it's, it's like a white pearlescent. That's the best way to describe it. And you'll certainly see, oh, hello. It's more blue. <laughs> and amethyst, which is the purple glitter. All right, so I'm going to move that around with my heat tool. And it's made more of a pastel. It's made more of a pastel effect. Which I did not expect. Oh, okay. Mind blown. So those super bright, super deep amethyst and twilight with the angelic glitter has made it pastel on the transparent. Very, very cool. Um, the last one I'm going to do, I'm just going to do one more on the black, on a piece of black. What have we got here? Rose gold. I didn't shake that first, so more alcohols come out of that than colour. Oh yeah, Louise, I just noticed the radio was on. Yeah, I just started dancing. Which means that Facebook might delete it. So you can see how amazing the um, alcohol inks on the black Yupo look. They just sit on top of it like a dream. All right. So actually, just letting you know as well, the um, all of the Yupo paper you will find under the heading on the website alcohol ink paper there is a special category just for alcohol ink paper so it's lovely and easy for you to find so i'm just going to pop a couple of caps on these before i spill them and then i'm going to talk to you about what do you do with all of these pretty things next because it's all very well to make all of these gorgeous backgrounds but then what do you do with them so i'm going to show you some examples and whip up a quick card for you, a quick little Christmas card and a, a generic sort of card just to show you what to do next. So bear with me just a second. I'm just popping them back into my storage case, which I will show you in a second. Uh, my storage case is also doubling at the moment as a drying area for my, uh, my bits that I have coloured. Um, so while I'm doing this, today only we've got 15% off of alcohol inks online. So that is the glitter alcohol inks, the metallic alcohol inks, and the, the plain and the pearl. 
and at present you will find them all in stock. I bought a truckload of them and I mean an absolute bucket load. So there is plenty for everyone. Uh, you will not find these on sale again through me this year. This will be my last time having alcohol inks on sale at this price. So it would be a very good idea to utilize that. Um, so I've got things drying off to the side here. Let me go and talk you through some of the cards that I have made before. So this is using a... I can probably take those off, can't I? Whew, sweaty hands. These ones here, I have made this one. I've just used the plain colours in the background, a couple of die cuts on top, stamp, and a bit of a doodle edge and mounted it on white. Okay, that's just on the plain white Yupo. This one here is using the glitter accents, and I think that that glitter is, there we go, just showing up on screen. I stamped my Natalie May scrapbooking hand-drawn stamp on the top there and coloured it with a white Pintor pen. This one is using, of course, as you can see, the glitter accents, and it's really nice to leave some white space. There's absolutely no reason why you can't leave white space. Then I used a large um, Hello paper rose uh, die to put over the top to stuck that down here's another one using the glitter accents and you can see that shimmery glitter which is really nice and that's just stamped using archival black ink and then I just used a white paint pen to lightly color my flowers uh, this one here is using, uh, of course, just the plain. And then over the top, I used a, a die cut from Uniquely Creative to just glued that straight onto the top. And it's made a lovely little gift card. A couple of weeks ago, when I did a live Facebook, I used an embossing folder to emboss my Yupo first and then did the alcohol inks over the top. So that's what you can see here. So this is one using a Tim Holtz die and you can see that gold I dripped from the top all the way and let it, let it catch on the embossed areas. So Yupo paper, there's no reason why you can't use that with your embossing folders and your die cutting machine, okay? And then this one has got a little bit of that glitter accent on it as well. Let the light catch it about there. Um, and you can see that that zigzag is the embossed card. Um, I love this one. This is probably one of my favourites. So this has got the, the leaf embossing folder. That's just a plane with the pearl cloud um, colour or a pearl pearl, I think it's called, or something like that. Quite one of the neutral tones um, with a bit of the glitter accent over the top. And then la, la look at like look at that. So that's using an embossing folder. I embossed it and then put my alcohol ink over the top. And this is just a plain one with absolutely nothing other than two colours and some blending solutions. So they come up looking really, really great. Um what I want to do now is I'm just quickly going to have a look at some of these ones that I've created and hit them off with the heat gun. So please just chat amongst yourselves while you watch paint dry. That one's come up a bit boring, actually. Oh, we've got a bit of camera shake here, Louise. Let me just reset the... There we go. Sorry guys, for those of you who get seasick. The camera just doesn't really show up how amazing the metallics are. I'm trying to get it so that it catches the light um, because it's very, very cool. And the transparent one, it's the same thing. The camera just doesn't catch the, the light the, the perfect way. 
So normally I would allow these just to sit and air dry, but um, I don't have the patience for that today. And I, would, I really want to show you how amazing they are. How many colours all up in the collection? Hang on, is that what you said? Of alcohol inks. Um, I do know that number. But I can't remember that number. But Louise is counting that number. About 80. Um, Julie says over 60. I think it's closer to 80. And I do believe that there are some new ones due out in a couple of weeks' time, which uh, I know you're going to want as well because that's how we roll. All right, so let me show you some of these colours close up now that they have dried. And you can see that metallic on there, right? That one's pretty bloody splendid i do like that okay um so that's on the white this is on the transparent now this is the one with the white glittery alcohol ink that turned this really dark navy blue and purple pastel like a wow 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 uh this one here is another transparent and this has got the glitter in it as well as the metallic green on the transparent, this um, hot pink one was the fluoro. It's a bit boring now, actually, but would be great to stamp over. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this one is my favourite. Oh, look at that. That I've got no words that I can say in public for that one because that's just amazing. Some greens and blues, and this has got a little metallic in it as well. I love the puddles. And then this, this one was the fluoro, so that's the fluoro bit in there, with um, some, dripped in some red and some bits and pieces. And the colours that we wouldn't normally choose, uh, love that, that's got a black in it as well, so really nice. Now, the ones that I did on black, we are looking at that. Like, it almost looks a bit like a stingray, doesn't it? How good is that? So the black is a massively understated paper. And finally, oh, this one's not dry, but that's the black Yupo with... The metallics on top. Hey, Trina. I see you watching. Um, okay, so what am I going to do with all of these things? Um, I don't know. I could do the die cut. I could take a die cut and cut that out. Um, I can stamp onto it. So what I prepared just a little earlier was a Paper Rose Christmas stamp, which is this one here. So this is in the Avery Earl stamp packaging. This is how I store some of my stamps. So this is the Christmas Joy Bells. And um, I stamped using black archival ink straight onto my paper. And then cut them out. So I'm going to attempt, and I do use that word loosely, I'm going to attempt to do a little bit of paper piecing. So just to make sure that I get it lined up properly, I'll take... So I stamped these onto different colour alcohol inks. Um, I just want to stamp it onto a, a plain piece just to use as a guide. And so I don't want it to be super black. That's why I just did that little polish 
rather than a, a plain stamp. And here's an off cut. Let's just use that. So that's all I want is I want a guide for a guide for me to then go. I can put that one there. Um, and while I'm doing this, just a reminder, if you have already ordered this weekend, uh, this week, sorry, and you would like to add to your order, all you have to do is select no judgment at the checkout. So you pay postage only once and then adding to your order is super easy. Um, Susie just asked, hey Nat, I don't get a, stamp, a great stamp in print when I do it. What am I doing wrong? Now, Susie, are you talking about a great stamp in print in general on normal paper or on Yupo? Hey, Cheryl. Sorry, I'm just waiting for that lovely 20 second delay to kick in where Susie answers. Please answer, don't leave me hanging, girl. On Yupo, okay. So, so just stamping those, okay guys, that is rough as guts, I, I admit to that. But I love that you've got that background. Um, so how do I stamp onto Yupo? I'm going to use a different stamp. I'm going to use the baubles because I want to show you how awesome the baubles will look. The paper rose baubles. Um, so, got my block. Number one, use black archival ink. Um, no, Lynn, you can add to your Wednesday order because I've got another special tomorrow, love. So um, all you have to do at the checkout is select no judgment instead of paying postage again. Okay, love? Um, so postage won't happen until Monday. The um, Okay, so I've got my paper rose stamp, a juicy archival ink. So juicy means I re-inked it this morning, okay? I can then take my piece of paper... my piece of Yupo paper. So this one is one I did earlier and just white Yupo. All I do is I make sure that it's like super inky and I go straight from here to here. I then give it a second. Now, because the Yupo paper is a little bit slippery it can slide a little. So to avoid that, I just hold it and it kind of, it doesn't dry, but it kind of, the ink catches. So if I do it again with a different stamped image to show you that it wasn't a fluke, actually it probably was a fluke, but I'm going to use my lovely little penguin from Ulta New. And I'm going, going to ink it like there is no tomorrow. So excuse the camera shake, but I'm really giving it a nice coat. And I smudged that then. Um, the other thing that I could do is, Louise, can you go to this third drawer of my trolley, the gift wrapping trolley, um, other big drawer, and grab the big stamp press out, please. Splendid. Thank you. Okay, so this one, I left it on too long, and what has happened is that it has almost dried too quick. So that might be what you're, get, what you're doing differently is leaving it on there too long. So if I use the stamp press, now I've got no room. I've got the ability to be able to go back and stamp again, right? So let's use this one because this is nice 
And then the penguin is sitting in the right seam. So I want to put in there. So I'm going to put my magnet on there. I don't need the stamp block. I'm going to come straight down onto here. And I'm going to ink that up really good. Down, stamp. Now when I lift it, I'm just being careful to make sure that it doesn't move. And I'm go I can go again now. Oh, shrats. I can go again now. I can add more ink. Because the stamp press will, will enable me to re-ink and exactly, re-stamp in exactly the same position. And that's given me a much, much, much nicer finish. Okay. Much sharper, much cleaner. And so much prettier. All right. So I think that might just be the key is maybe use a stamp press, Susie. If you're having troubles with stamping onto Yupo, then if you are holding it in the same place, use your magnet so you can go backwards or, or tape it down so that you can grab it. See, that to me still looks a little bit wet and I would need to... Um, dry that with my heat gun to make sure that the oil-based archival ink has dried before I do anything else with that. Um, and then I can add a sentiment. So the lovely little sentiment that goes with this one, with this lovely little penguin, the ultra new penguin, is you warm my heart. So if I pop that on, and I need to get on top of it to get it in the right spot and do it on camera. Oh, shit. Fizz. ta -da. Oh, look at that. And I didn't mess it up. Excellent. Because I'm human, because I do that too, guys. All right, done. Instant card front on alcohol ink. That's amazing. I really like that. Okay, so that is what we are looking at with alcohol inks. Um, not complicated, not easy to, uh, sorry, not complicated, complicated, but just nice and easy for you to be able to do. It's not supposed to be difficult. I mean, when you look at that, which is incredible, you could just do a whole heap of these backgrounds and die cut them out ready to go. Or you can go and find a, um, a print and, and stamp onto that. You can, there's so many things you can do. So that's what I did there is I stamped on four different pieces of Yupo and then cut that out and paper pieced it together so that I've got a, a layered bell for my Christmas cards. And don't forget Christmas, 15% off until Sunday. Stamps, stencils, papers, kits um embellishments so many things christmasy are 15 percent off so get on to that um but that's that's not supposed to be difficult um so if i had you know if i had that bauble that i did earlier i could quite easily do a whole heap of little hanging baubles around uh coming off of a of a card in lots of different colors um I could run them through my embossing machine now or I could do it after. But you get an amazing effect from running your Yupo paper through your um, embossing, with an embossing folder. Uh, there's plenty of, plenty of ideas and don't overthink it. It doesn't have to be absolutely, incredibly, mind-blowingly perfect every single time. It's a handmade gift, guys. That's what it's supposed to be, a handmade item. So um, the alcohol ink carry cases from Couture Creations, we have these available on special as well. They are reduced down from $40 down to $35. Uh, this piece here is removable, so you can use it as a carry case when you have more than 60. 
because that will happen. Um, the Ranger alcohol ink storage tins, these are also in stock for $15.50 as well. Um, so they are available, so you can add to your order. The uh, UPO paper is available in white, transparent and black. And you will find those under the heading of alcohol ink paper. But I highly recommend getting yourself a little swatch thing like this. Um, send me a message if you want a chain. I've got a couple of these floating around if you want to do this. I don't mind gifting that on. Um, and um, yeah, really, really handy to be able to see what you've got and know what the colours are with your name on the back. I recommend using a Sharpie to write those on because it smudges on Yupo paper. Um, and sorry, I just realised you just got film with the back of my hand there. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, I will be back again at whatever time I said earlier. 2.30. 2.30, Adelaide time, 3 o'clock for the rest of the world, uh, which is about when the guy's coming to do my windscreen, which would be splendid. And then... Um, Pattern papers, 15% off, nataliemay.com.au. Christmas, 15% off, and Lindy's products and alcohol inks for today only. So as I was saying before, you only need to pay postage on your very first order, meaning that um, the second time you do an order, no judgment. All right, so have a fantastic day, guys, and I will see you in a couple of hours' time, and I'm going to do a little studio tour show you some foiling, show you the hot mess that is this studio at the moment and show you some, uh, some, some cool stuff around the shop. All right, look forward to chatting with you all soon. Um, yes, Trina, you can send me a message. I just saw yours come up and I look forward to chatting to you all soon. Wash your hands, kiss your kids, chat soon.